What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 17 of Park to Prem here with Lincoln City. Today we've got a huge game everyone, it's the Carabao Cup, a competition that we've never really made a run in at Lincoln or at Boston. I, I guess we wouldn't have made a run at Boston because it's a competition for the Football League teams. But today we're taking on Everton away from home and whilst it's not quite as sexy as an FA Cup tie, it's an opportunity nevertheless to see what we can do against one of the big dogs. Now there has been a little bit going on since you were last here including me signing a new contract which is very very good. So we've signed it £2,000 a week which I think is a slight decrease actually on what we were on previously but it is a longer deal. And perhaps most notably, I've negotiated a club compensation kind of reduction. So if any team wants to approach me, it isn't going to quite cost them as much money. Still, £150,000. I think I'm worth more than that, although maybe I'm kidding myself. Um, but nevertheless, it opens up the opportunity to move, which... I think is quite a nice thing really. Now before we get into this video you might be sat thinking Jack you sound sick you sound ill look I've just woken up it it's it's the morning of the day you're going to see this episode yesterday I spent the whole day working on a custom database for a stream save that's coming up for those of you unaware I stream football manager over on twitch it's twitch.tv slash work the space. It'd be lovely to have you over there. Uh, on Friday, I think it's going to be, although that's not quite locked in yet. We're going to be starting a whole new save game in uh, kind of Sweden. So if that sounds interesting, if you want to find out more, I will maybe have some updates about if that's definitely happening on Friday in a in a not so distant episode but yes i spent the whole day working on that it's very close to being ready and i'm excited to see many of you guys there anyway what i'm not excited about is our league form because it's been absolutely awful we're down in 12th everyone we're down in 12th of course the board expectation this year is just to avoid relegation right it's to avoid a relegation battle fight bravely against it even so it's almost like they expect us to go down i admire the optimism it would be fair to say that given our recent run of games um that seems like it could be a possibility dare i say but i have got an excuse i have got a reason and it's that jamie cumming has been out for an extended period of time we've been without our first choice goalkeeper it's not been particularly good i say all of this he's not actually missed that much football um but doolin he's had to play the last couple of games and whilst he's an okay keeper He's conceded six in three games, so it's not it's not been perfect. Although I'm kind of just using him as a scapegoat. Rather than do that, why don't we talk about the results? Because there's lots of red here to go through. Of course, last episode we took on Charlton, and I kind of ended the episode saying, you know, Fleetwood and Preston were going to be tough. They were the two teams who were at the time in first and second. And in both these games, we got draws, which I was pretty happy with. A 0-0 draw against Fleetwood was a little boring. Against Preston, they took the lead early on via a Jack Payne penalty, but then Ellis Sims came to the rescue. He scored for us in the 64th minute, and it finished 1-1 at Deepdale. And you know what? Two draws in the two, you know, tough games on the horizon. I thought, well, now we can kick on. Now things can go well. And after the next couple of games, you'd be fooled into thinking that that was going to be the case. We beat Accrington Stanley 2-0 in the EFL Cup third round. Paul Glatzel with two goals in that game. Good to see him getting on the score sheet. Uh, he's not played too much in the league, but, you know, getting a bit of cup action, getting a few cup goals, it was lovely to see. And in the very next game, well, that's where things started to go wrong. Uh, we took on Oxford, and we only scraped a 1-0 win against Quanta, but it was not convincing at all. This was not a good performance, and... I don't know, I started to worry. I started to look at the fact we'd only scored, well, one goal in our last kind of four, well, a total, a total of four goals in the last five league games, but no more than one goal in any of our last five. Now, the issue here really is it got really bad in October and it started off with a game against Swindon. Joel Lopez was sent on in the, sent off in the 92nd minute. I'm kind of using that as a scapegoat. We just weren't good enough. Um, they scored through Adele Afia in the 55th minute as we went on the attack, as we went on the offensive, desperately chasing a goal. They scored again through Mottle Henry. So, yeah, 2-0 down, looking for a response, taking on local rivals Grimsby Town in the EFL Trophy. And we lost on penalties, which wasn't very good. But it was okay, because we were going to make amends in the league. E except we didn't. Um, Matty Pollock scored for them. The centre-back with a header from a free kick in a wide area. Made it 1-0 to Grimsby. And uh, I started to panic a little bit. There is one little silver lining. It's the fact that we beat Carlisle 4-2. Ellis Sims getting two goals, which was nice to see because he's not really been in the goal scoring as of late. Um, but it was not, well, a good feeling that lasted too long. Because against Wigan, in my 100th game in charge, 
It all went tits up, as the kids say. We lost 3-2 in this one. Um, they took the lead through Josh Rafael's... No, they didn't. I'm lying. Aidan Fitzpatrick got us the lead in the 20th minute. It was a rare opportunity for me to say that we've taken the lead. They then pulled us back almost immediately through J Josh Rafael's before Ben Cottrell scored just five minutes later from the penalty spot. At half-time, it was 2-1. I was, I was feeling pretty good. I was feeling pretty happy. And then Neil Ellis for them popped up with two. He scored in the 53rd minute and then in the 57th minute. We look, have looked very questionable defensively. This was a game where coming wasn't available. But just across the board, we've not looked particularly great. Obviously, Quanza is still having to play at centre-back at the moment um, due to the injuries that we've had. And, uh, well, what made this worse is Neil Ellis, who just scored two, he got sent off after an hour. And then we just couldn't break the deadlock. It finished 3-2. A disappointing result. A disappointing run of form. The only real kind of silver lining is that we're still in the EFL Cup. And there are some easier games on the horizon. But sadly for us, as things stand, we sit in 12th. Now, we have got a game in hand on pretty much all the teams behind us. And the league is very, very close. That is definitely worth reiterating here. A single win for us could take us as high as 5th from 12th. Yeah, it, it's... It's pretty mad how close it is, and we have got easier games on the horizon, but given our recent form, how easy they're going to be remains a mystery. You can see we've got Wickham who are bottom, Warsaw in 21st, they're in the relegation zone, Newport County just outside the relegation zone, then got AFC Wimbledon who are going very strong before Plymouth 18th, Blackpool in 14th, and Shrewsbury in 8th. So all in all... It's not been very good. I'm trying to find a positive. There isn't really a positive. You would have thought with Ellis Sims not scoring many, maybe the new kid on the block, Eldrissi or Elidrissi, would have got some goals. No, he's been he's been awful. He's been awful. I wish I wish I could lie and say he's been the best transfer I've made all yet. No, he's been trash. There's no other way of painting it, folks. He's been absolutely potato which obviously isn't too good. Now, one little thing I thought we'd talk about before we get into the game today. There's some transfers I've got going on here because I've taken some punts on some players who uh, had their contracts expiring at pretty big teams. The first is Lionel Robert. He's playing for Zebra. He's playing for Juve. He looks pretty good if you ask me. So I thought we'd take a punt on him. He's joining us. His contract expired at the end of last season. And another player we've taken a punt on is Peter Mach. That's probably not how you say it, but it sounds good. This guy can just play everywhere. He's the Czech James Milner. Um, they're two younger players, two younger punts. The obvious question you're probably going to have is... Jack, how have these guys got work permits? And the truth is, I don't actually exactly know, which I know isn't the best of answers, but I discovered a few useful filters that I thought I would show you guys over in the player search screen. And the one that I've been using a lot is work permit chance, work permit lightly. Uh, you can find it, I think it's down at the bottom here, transfer, work permit chance. And also work permit required is another one that you might want to try using. But yeah, if you have work permit lightly on, and uh, say you've got your scan range in Europe, which I can theoretically upgrade to. You can see here 38 players and then just sort by age. You get players here who would not normally get work permits, but the game flags are saying, hey, these guys could be good enough to get work permits. It's a little bit weird, but the long and short of it is, is that you actually get some pretty good youngsters show up here. And obviously a lot of them are playing for bigger clubs. And normally I would just discount them and say, ah, that's not happening. Um, because, you know, that if they needed a work permit, they're just not going to get one. But, you know, you know what, in a kind of bizarre little way, um, it just so happens that these players all apparently are likely to get a work permit. I'm not sure what it is about these players. I don't know if it's their potential, the stature of the cl clubs they're playing for. Um, I mean, a few of them are playing for clubs like Midgeland, for example, which I wouldn't consider like a super high profile team. No disrespect to any Midgeland fans. Um, but no, may maybe you'll find this useful. I tweeted out about it to someone who was asking about signing players after Brexit. Um, obviously, the recruitment package being upgraded will also help you actually see the players if you have it downgraded. They won't show up. Um, I guess that's another useful tip. You can upgrade the package for like a day and then downgrade it again without being charged the money for it. Um, if you didn't know that, that's a little life hack for you, and it won't get uh, taken out your scouting budget. But no, may maybe that will help you. If it does help you, if you find some immense player now because of that, please come back to this video and let the people know that I don't just talk rubbish all the time. Occasionally, there is a nugget of knowledge here. 
Anyway, today's game against Everton is a bit of a weird one because it'd be nice to give them a good result. At the end of the day, I see this more as an opportunity to test ourselves against Premier League opposition. If we just look at Everton and how they are performing right now, they are fifth in the uh, the Premier League. They're going very, very strong. Down at the lower end of things, Nottingham Forest in the relegation zone um, are a team that I'm keeping a little bit of a close eye on because they're not too far away from Lincoln geographically. Of course, they are our affiliate. And there's a small part of me that thinks, man... If Chris Hewton got sacked, that could be a pretty good logical next step for Park to Prem if I could get the job. Obviously, it's going to be a bit of a jump up. I feel like I almost need an extra season here at Lincoln to even be able to consider those kind of jobs. And, well, we're not going to get that job if we're finishing 12th in the league. We need to start marching towards the playoffs. But sadly, it's not going to be something that we are focusing on today. Anyway, you can see Hayden Muller, who's been out for a long time, is not requiring a fitness test, but is a little way away from match fitness. Quantz has had an extended run in the first team, and to be fair to him, he's improved a lot over the course of it. But after 10 games, I kind of want to have the star, I want to say the star centre-back back. Maybe that's an exaggeration to call Hayden Muller a star centre-back but the better centre-back back, although I will say after his injuries, he has declined a little bit. It was a kind of pretty serious injury, the abdominals tear, but he's back in the back line. So it's a full-strength defence with dueling in goal because, uh, yeah, coming still still not match fit. Not going to risk his fitness levels and rushing back in today. In centre mid, we are going to go with Carter and Teddy Jenks. I will be honest and say Teddy... He's not wowed me so far. He's not done the, the magic for us so far. He's not been terrible. He's just kind of not been amazing but that's you know that happens sometimes to players i'm trying not to be too reactionary after one rough month because i feel like football manager and i'm sure you've experienced this it's very much a game of momentum i feel like if you get a bit of good morale get some good form going it can snowball into a really good season whereas if you don't really get going it can be a bit of a tall order in terms of the rest of the team though it's kind of fairly standard Fitzpatrick out on the left green down the middle Cottrell out on the right and uh, Sims up front just looking at these three players kind of statistically they have been a little disappointing so far certainly in the case of Fitzpatrick and Cottrell I was really hoping that they would make the step up to league one level and to be fair Fitzpatrick has not been performing badly nor has Sims but certainly looking at Callum Green thinking mate you need you need to start showing me something because with teams interested I mean, would I cash in? No, I, I, would I cash in on him? Would I? I don't know. The Callum Green fan club might come for me then. But there is a small part of me that thinks, oh, he's not really ever performing for us. Of course, I've played him in the deeper role for a little while and it hasn't really worked. So we've now moved him further forward. You can see as well, I have rotated the team around quite a lot. Chris Willis has played some uh, decent amount of football for us. But sadly, he's not really been putting in the performances last year, uh, just yet. There's a small part of me that wants to play him down the middle as kind of the centre attack in mid. But with 10 passing, I'm really not sure he can do a job there. Is that is that a harsh analysis? I don't know. I'm, I'm not willing to put too much faith in him yet. Anyway, you can see the rest of the team here. You'll notice that with Quanta back on the bench and with McGuane back in defence, I've actually taken Tyler Adams off the bench. Or not Tyler Adams, Mo Adams off the bench. This has opened up the opportunity to have Elidrissi and Glatzel on the bench at the same time. I say that like they're going to offer us something. They've got two goals between us so uh, between them so far this year. So I'm hoping eventually they're going to become the impact subs that I was hoping that they would be this year. That feels a little away uh, from reality, at least right now. But anyway, let's get into this game. Let's shake off my morning voice. Let's beat Everton, shall we? Away from home, um, as I said. Going into this, given our recent form, not expecting a whole lot, but... It's a rare opportunity to enjoy some Premier League opposition in the Cup. A little bit of a test for ourselves. Ellis Sims playing against his former club. Uh, I didn't look at who they've got in their team. Is their, is their team good? Barker, Awobi. Okay, it's a pretty full-strength team. They've got Calvert-Lewin, Awobi and Volland as a midfield trio. I don't like that. They've got Kabamian at right back, which is weird. Pickford down the middle. This, they are not messing around. They are, they are playing a full-strength team, everyone. I don't know exactly how to feel about that. Feels a bit try-hardy to me, Everton, but who am I to judge? Hayden Muller, by the way, coming back from injury, booked after 10 minutes. That's terrifying. Now they've got a set piece. It's hit. It's swinging. Drew, I'm about to call him drooling. Maybe he is drooling. He's not, he's not as good as coming, is he? Maybe drooling is a more adequate name. He just sits at the back drooling away. Just a bit a bit useless. Anyway, Volan to Farai. Down this right-hand side. Lopez puts in a tackle. I mean, imagine if we win this. 
I know, I know it's maybe maybe it's you know hope talking more than anything else. But imagine if we win this, right? Muller, don't ease out of tackles, mate. Nothing silly. Don't want to go down a man against Everton. Look, we're tr we're trying to just FM them as best we can. Absorb the pressure, hit them on the break. Get Ellis Sims the goal against his former club. That's the dream. I mean, considering we've been spanked by League One teams recently, the fact this is nil nil after forty minutes. Ain't that bad. I mean, oh my word. Okay, get it off the line. That was fine. Never never in doubt. That was a little bit iffy, shall we say. But we live to fight another day. Get it away. Barker heads over. I mean, this is okay, right? Am I, am I crazy for being content at 0-0? I'd never normally be happy at 0-0. But it's 0-0 against Everton who are trying their hardest. I mean, the XG doesn't look particularly promising for us. We've only had two shots. But I'm going to, you know what? Hands together. I'm happy with your performance so far. I think that's fair. You, you've done all right, lads. But in the second half, I need a new gear from you. And by a new gear, I mean, I would just like to see one highlight of a shooting. Anyway, Muller wins the header. He's been well behaved since he got booked, which I suppose is good. Green gives away the ball. Green giving away the ball. Barker, oh my, what is happening? What is happening? I don't know what just happened there. I wish I could tell you. What, what is... They've scored. They've scored. I thought the first highlight was the chance. It wasn't. Drooling. Drooling, what are you doing? He came out. He slid. I mean, it's heroic defending. Bodies being thrown on the line. Sadly, it wasn't enough, though. The ball eventually broke to Calvert-Lewin, who just about gets himself onside. I was hoping for a moment that the linesman might come to the rescue, but no, it, it, it was definitely onside. Also, I'm, I'm slating our keeper. He's on a 7.0, everyone. I was about to make a change, but there's a, there's a highlight starting with a throw-in in their half. If that ain't a reason to stop what you're doing, I don't know what is. Carter, back to Cabango. Not a fan of the fact Carter's wearing gloves, by the way. That is shocking, son. Get them off. Hughes. What can we do? We've not had a shot yet. Carter. He gives away the ball. Get the gloves off, man. The, the distraction. Anyway, we've got some defending to do here. Ball being brought forward. This is terrifying. Don't foul in the box. That is, that is great defending. Now can we... Oh, I don't like that pass. I do not like that pass across our own line into our own box. Looping header goes over. All right, 55 minutes gone. It's time for change. There's part of me that wants to go to the 4-2. Four, four, four I say that like it's done stuff this year. I'll be honest, I've tried it a few times. It's not really wowed me on any occasion. Anyway, we'll take off Charlie Carter, who's been disappointing. Sims is going to stay on. I am going to bring in El Idrissi. If there's a moment to get your first goal for the club, it's this game here. Although I realise I'm asking a tall order, perhaps, against Everton. Considering we've not had many chances so far in the game, it'd be a bit unfair to slate him if he doesn't come on and score in this one. This is not the kind of game where you necessarily expect him to score. Although, here he is. Look at him. He's blooming quick. Eladrissi, where are you going, mate? Where are you going? Back, Fitzpatrick. I'm starting to believe everyone. Can you hear that in my voice? It'll turn to pain soon, I promise. Teddy Jenks to Green. To Sims. Nice build-up play here. Jenks. Fitzpatrick almost on the end of it. Goes to Green, though. Now with Cottrell. This is all right. El Idrissi. Sims. Hits it just wide of the post. We've had a highlight, everyone. We've had a blooming highlight. And it didn't involve drooling, which is a, a small silver lining. Barker, though, with it. Don't, don't let him bring it inside. Don't. That's a great tackle, referee. And he knows it. He said, I paused for a second there, I'm going to be honest. Expected the foul to be given. It looked like a football manager foul. Fisher at left back for them. Bringing the ball forward. Plays it forward to Calvert-Lewin. Do not let him get in the ball. That is okay. That's not. Awobi heads over. I mean, it's still only 1-0, everyone. It's still only 1-0. I'm feeling, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic that we could still get something from this game. Although, that might be about to vanish very, very quickly here. They've now got Luckman on the pitch for them. Has he made a... I guess he's made a return back to Everton, which is a bit of a weird transfer. Barker heads over. Tell you what, they are liking to whip the ball into the box and head it over, aren't they? We're holding on so far, though. I'm going to demand more from the players. A Wobi to Cash. Can we dispossess him? Fitzpatrick, look at the battle in there. It's a two-on-two -two at the back. I'll tell you what, they are inviting... 
They are inviting the counter-attack on there, kind of saying, come on in. Leaving two at the back like that, Sims. To Jenks, Teddy, Teddy, Teddy Jenks, this is your moment. Come on. Everton won, Lincoln City won. I can't believe it's happening. I can't believe what I'm seeing. What is happening? El Idrissi, Sims. Oh, it was so nice, the build-up play. Sims with a superb little bit of hold-up play. Then a great ball through. I mean, it's a bit annoying that we can't win in League One, but we're giving Everton such a good game here. It kind of gives me hope that it's just a blip in form, um, what you've seen so far in terms of recent form in League One. We're, we're battling here. They've got Kevin Volland up front. Anyway, Drooling picks it up for us. I'm just nicknaming him Drooling at this point. I kind of like the idea of a goalkeeper just drooling away. Sims, Cottrell, can you get there? No, that was a fancy flick clearance. Now with a Wobi. Can't, can't now afford to lose focus, I guess, having got the one goal, but we might be in trouble here. Drooling makes a save. It's blocked. Get it away, Teddy. Oh, my word. Ten minutes left. Um, I'm, th This has been fun. I'm enjoying myself, everyone. I think it goes to extra time. Oh, no, Teddy. Not like this. He's not on the pitch. Ref, you can't let them have this. Oh, he's got his head in his hand. He's in agony. He's in agony in the bottom right there. How's he... Oh, no. It's not looking good. Oh, my word. Sims. Go on, Ellis. Go on, Ellis. Gets this form... Ah, nah, balls. <laughs> not, the, not what the doctor ordered there. And we're straight into another highlight. I realise I've only made one sub in this game, but I've been pretty happy with what we've done since we switched to the 4-4-2. Maybe I need to try the 4-4-2 in the league. Oh, why? Football manager. Why? I've been quite happy. As I was saying, with what we've done with the 4-4-2. Maybe, maybe this is the way forward. Oh, they've just scored, though. I mean, Cabango heads it away, but the midfield is not there because Teddy Jenks isn't on the pitch at the time. He's running onto the pitch. He's like, Gaffer, I'm here. I can come for you. Oh, yeah, we're going to lose this because we, didn't have, because we didn't have a man on the pitch because he was injured. That, that's upset me a little bit. All right, Cottrell and Fitzpatrick. I want you further up the pitch. Jordan Stevens, come on for Cottrell, who's a bit tired. We've, we've got to go for the, got to go for it now, everyone. This is we've got five minutes of added time. This is one of those situations where you slide everything to the right, and then nothing happens for the entire game. You all know, you all know the kind of thing I'm talking about. Take long kicks, out of possession, press, urgent. Just slide everything to the right. Tick every box. Then when nothing happens, do not be surprised. Um. You know what? You might call this pure desperation. Paul Glatzel. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with I'm gonna play with Green as a quarterback. I feel like at this point it's we we got we gotta go for it, haven't we? We we gotta go for it, right? Sims is gonna play pressing forward on attack. Glatzel on pressing forward. Everyone's on attack, basically. And Green, just sit on your own, look pretty, do your thing. Lope, Lopez attack. I mean, this is we're getting desperate. We're probably just going to concede one and that'll be the end of the game. I'll shout demand more. There's two minutes left. Please, someone do something. I've spent three minutes clicking attack. There's 40 seconds. Green, Stevens. I mean, look how many men we've got forward here. Steve, go on, lad. Go, don't just shoot from right. You absolute pillock. Lopez. Lope. Lope. Oh, Adressi! He scored! He scored! It's 2 2. Oh, my word. I can't believe it. He scored his first goal. He scored. I can't. What has just happened? Tactical genius. Tactical. Green is a quarterback. Get it trending on Twitter. Eladrissi into the bottom corner. Oh my, what is happening? Who thought that was a good idea? If you were midway through writing a comment telling me how dumb I am, delete it immediately. Now, we don't have really good penalty takers, so this could all be in vain. But look, the fact that we the fact we've gone to extra time against Everton playing a full strength team, as far as I'm concerned, that's a that's a win. That's a win, right? We'll do we'll do the first five penalty takers. I'm gonna be honest, our penalty takers are absolutely awful. So I'm still a little cautious that this isn't really gonna go anywhere. But we we can dare to dream. We can dare to dream. It's Ferrai up for first for them. What can he do? He scores it. I'm actually. I want to change. I want to change the camera angle here. Sorry. This is this is important. I feel like at this point, 
I want the reversed cam. Uh, is that that's not really what I wanted. I I wanted. Well, I thought I wanted behind him, but this is not this is not the angle I wanted. I can't get the angle I wanted. Oh, it's a right. Just go go to director, everyone. To director, the direct the director camera is probably better than me anyway. Right, Glatzel. What can he do? This is the angle I wanted. How do I get this camera? That's the this is the camera I want. The director knows. Right, it's one one in the shootout. I'm. I might be having a small breakdown. I, I think that might be evident. Awobi steps up, scores it. Mm. We lost on penalties to Grimsby earlier on this month. Look at poor Teddy Jenks, stood with a little injury above his head. Right, Green, I've been mean to you. Score this. Prove to me I'm wrong. Prove to me I'm wrong about you, Green. Oh, my word. I can't handle this. Right, Luckman, do your, do your rubbish little Penenka thing you did for Fulham that time. Go on. I dare you. He hits it. He's missed it. He's blooming missed it. There's a chance. We have hope. Right, Eladrissi, this is your chance to silence the doubters. You've scored in the 94th minute to get us here. He scores in the shootout here as well. It's 3-2 Lincoln. And now, Savarino, who I've, I'm sure thought he'd scored the winning goal for Everton, is up. He does score it. The pressure was on him. He's converted. I've just realised that Ellis Sims is taking our last penalty. The former Evertonian. The first Hughes needs to score. He's taken a very long run up there. He's not actually stopped to do his run up. He's kind of jogged from the halfway line, transitioned straight into the run up, which I kind of respect. Right, Everton have to score. If if we if 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 they miss this, we knock Everton out. And even if they do score it, Sims is taking a pen for the match. Right, drooling. What can you do, drooling? What can you do? He's missed it. Oh, it's all on Sims. He's playing against his former club. He's playing. It's such a long. Why would you not start the front of the QL? Ellis, are you okay, mate? Come on, through the crowd you go, mate. There you go. Blimey, like me trying to get through a nightclub. Ellis Sims against his former club. This is for the match. He's missed it. He's missed it. No, it's gone. It's gone to sudden death. I'm having a breakdown. Cash steps up for them. It's saved! It's saved by the keeper. Oh, Cabango, though, our centre-back. Right, Cabango. Please. Please. He steps up. This for the match. He scored it! Oh, we've not made that easy. The drama. The scenes. Ellis Sims, you have been bailed out, my friend. I mean, tactical genius. If you ask me, but drool it, dro drooling has got my, you are our hero. Nine point oh, get take a get a steam screenshot of that, Jack. Get that. I've not got that of his rating. Let's try again. There we go. Oh, save of the moment. How have we done that? How the hell have we done that? Very very happy. Now can we start winning games in the league? That would be nice, wouldn't it? I'm sure some of you tuned in at the start of this episode thinking, oh my word, it's just going to be one of those ones where, you know, he gets spanked by the Premier League opposition and we all laugh at him. Nah, not today. Kenny Jenks is injured though. And El Idrissi, man of the... Well, he inspired us. He didn't get man of the match, but he was my man of the match. Oh my word, what a way to start the day. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope I'm going to be able to get this episode up on time because I'm going to be cutting it fine because the game went to extra time. Of all the excuses to have as to why was an upload slightly late, Jack, the answer, it went to extra time, feels like a bit of a, a weird one. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. Crazy result. I have no idea who we're going to be playing next time. It could be the next round of the EFL Cup. What I do know is I need to remember to breathe. And, uh, well, whoever we end up being drawn against in the quarterfinal, I, I may see you guys that. Although that's a long way away. We might do, we might do a game in November. Maybe a league game, because I do need to start doing better in the league. Either way, I've lost my head, everyone. I'm rambling along. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>